Let's talk about redox reactions in galvanic cells. This is a part 2 video of our electrochemistry playlist. Redox reactions in galvanic cells happen through two methods. First one is called direct electron transfer. So we say in a spontaneous reaction of redox half reactions, which is taking place in one beaker, electrons are going to be transferred directly from one reactant to another. Let's consider this reaction between copper sulfate aqueous solution and a zinc metal. Let's look at what happens. If we were in a practical environment, we would notice a temperature rise and we can see there is a reddish brown metal which is deposited on the submerged zinc electrode. This metal is copper and the electrolyte will change from blue to colorless. Let's zoom into the atomic level and see what happens in redox reactions. In this case, zinc metal is reacting with copper sulfate. Remember the copper sulfate electrolyte is an aqueous solution which means it will split into copper 2 plus ions and the sulfate ions. We call this spectator ions and we usually ignore them when we write our half reactions and our net ionic reactions. Because copper 2 plus is a strong oxidizing agent, it's going to order zinc to lose its two electrons. And the zinc 2 plus will then go and form zinc sulfate. The copper 2 plus will go and take those two electrons and become reduced into copper solid. And this will continue to happen everywhere until the reaction reaches completion. So we see that zinc solid becomes zinc aqueous because it loses two electrons. And those two electrons are then taken by copper which becomes copper solid. If we combine the two half reactions, we get what we call the net ionic reaction where we cancel the two electrons and then we end up with the reactants on the reactant side and the products on the product side. If we look at the overall reaction, we can see that we started with zinc solid and copper sulfate aqueous and we end up with copper solid and zinc sulfate aqueous. The zinc metal is silver in color and the copper sulfate is blue. The copper metal is reddish brown in color and the zinc sulfate is colorless. This explains our observations. Now we will talk about the galvanic cell which is an indirect electron transfer involving two half reactions happening in two beakers which are connected by a salt bridge. In this case electrons move in an external circuit from the anode to the cathode. We will look at an example we considered already which is the zinc copper galvanic cell. This is the zinc electrode which is called the anode because this is where oxidation happens. This is the zinc 2 plus electrolyte. This is called the copper electrode which is called the cathode because this is where the reduction happens. And we have copper 2 plus in solution. In a galvanic cell the anode is negative and the cathode is positive. The zinc metal will turn into zinc 2 plus which will drop into solution thereby releasing two electrons which are now going to travel through the external circuit. This is where we harvest the electrons to connect anything in the circuit and we call this a battery. When they reach the cathode side, they are going to attract a copper 2 plus from the solution which is now going to be deposited back onto the electrode. So at the end of the day, we see that the zinc electrode is going to be used up and the copper electrode is going to gain more mass. As we can see in this animation, zinc is turning into solution while copper is becoming a metal. Consequently, the zinc electrolyte is going to become more concentrated while the copper electrolyte is going to become more dilute because the copper is turning into copper metal. The salt bridge is making sure that this reaction is possible but we will discuss it later on. Let's look at the half reactions. We have oil which means oxidation is loss of electron side and we have rig which means reduction is gain of electrons on the other side. We also have an ox and a red cat which respectively means anode is where oxidation happens and reduction happens at the cathode. We know on our oxidation side the electrode is zinc and the electrolyte is zinc 2 plus 
or the zinc sulfate. The half reaction is zinc becoming zinc sulfate or zinc toplas, thereby losing two electrons which are going to go in the external circuit. So we see a decrease in mass on the oxidation side. On the reduction side, the electrode is copper. The electrolyte is copper toplas or copper sulfate. The half reaction is copper toplas, which gains two electrons from zinc to become copper solid. Then we do notice an increase in mass on the copper electrode. The net ionic reaction looks like this. And this whole battery will produce a voltage of 1,1 volts. This is a positive voltage. This is why we call a galvanic cell the voltaic cell because it is basically a battery which produces voltage. And we use it in our cell phones and in our everyday gadgets and cars as well. These batteries will consist of multiple galvanic cells like this set up so that they give out the desired voltage output. Let's talk about the cell notation. For active electrodes in the galvanic cell, we will have two lines in the middle which represents our salt bridge and then we will have the anode on the left side separated by one line and then the electrolyte. We will write the cathode on the far side separated by one line and then the other side will be the electrolyte as well. Looking at the example we just discussed, the anode was the zinc metal, the electrolyte associated with the zinc metal was the zinc two plus aqueous, then the tow line for the salt bridge, then we have the copper two plus aqueous associated with the cathode, then we have the cathode which is copper solid. For inactive electrodes, usually we use platinum or carbon electrodes. These are used when the electrodes are involved with gases or any aqueous to aqueous half reaction. For example, when Fe2 plus becomes Fe3 plus plus an electron. So this side, this is an aqueous and this side is still an aqueous. In this case, we will use metals like Pt which won't react in the reaction. In this case, we represent the inert metal that we use on the far side. Let's talk about the salt bridge. Why do we need a salt bridge for our galvanic cell to function? This is so that it can separate the electrolytes. In this way, they do not mix. The salt bridge also completes the circuit. It also supplies the pathway through which ions can move to maintain neutrality throughout the cell. Consider this salt bridge here, which contains the ions of K plus and NO3 minus. I made this in a way that is easier to remember. So in this case, the N ions, which are the NO3 minus, will go towards the anode side. And the cat ions, which are the K plus ions, will go towards the cathode side. So you just remember N will go to N and cat will go to cat. In galvanic cells, we have what we call the standard electrode potential. Let's talk about the standard hydrogen electrode. The hydrogen electrode H2 has been chosen as the reference electrode. This means that all the other electrodes that we are going to look at or all the other half cells will be compared to the hydrogen half cell. The hydrogen electrode looks like this. It is assigned the zero volt as the standard electrode potential. And this is done at standard temperature and pressure and also at a concentration of one mole per decimeter cubed. Hydrogen gas is pumped in in this little tube and then we also have an inert platinum electrode so that the half cell itself can function. The electrolyte used in this case is dilute hydrochloric acid. The half cell will look like this. Platinum divided by one line and then we have the H2 and then we have the H plus aqueous from the hydrochloric acid. Double line representing the salt bridge and so on on the cathode side. The half reaction looks like this. Hydrogen gas becomes 2H plus and loses two electrons. The E naught for this is 0, 0,00 volt, which is assigned to compare with the other half cells. We can then make the tables of standard reduction potentials, which will have H2 becoming 2H plus plus two electrons, 
with an E0 of 0 volt in the middle which is highlighted and when you go up you see strong oxidizing agents increasing then on top we have this half reaction with an E0 of positive 2,87 volt. This means that F2 is a strong oxidizing agent and it is easily reduced. Going down we see strong reducing agents and the strongest of them all is lithium which has an E0 of negative 3,05 volts. This tells us that lithium is a strong reducing agent and is easily oxidized. Carefully examine your table to see which side represents strong oxidizing agent and which side represents increasing reducing ability. You can see that each half reaction is given with a double arrow which means it is reversible. In other words, it can either be oxidation half reaction or reduction half reaction based on what it is reacting with. For these galvanic reactions, we can calculate the initial EMF of the cell using these equations. E0 of the cell is given by E0 of the cathode minus E0 of the anode. And we can then write it this way. E0 of the cell is E0 of the reduction minus E0 of oxidation. Because remember, red cat meaning cathode is the same as reduction or an ox which means anode is the same as oxidation. Or we can say E0 of the cell is given by E0 oxidizing agent minus E0 reducing agent because we know that the substance that is undergoing reduction is the oxidizing agent and the substance that is undergoing oxidation is the reducing agent. Now we will look at two examples. The first example says consider the following unbalanced chemical reaction between manganese dioxide and lead. The question says Use the table of standard reduction potentials and determine number one, the redox half reaction, the oxidation half reaction, the balance the chemical equation, and determine whether the reaction is spontaneous. So from the tables of standard reduction potentials, we are going to look at a reaction that involves manganese dioxide and Mn2+, which becomes this one. And we see the E0 is plus 1.23 volts. We are going to do the same for a reaction that involves Pb and Pb2 plus from the standard tables. And we see that it is this one with an E0 of negative 0.13 volts. So how do we determine which one is our reduction half reaction and which one is our oxidation half reaction? We compare the two e naughts. And then the most positive one or the biggest one will stay the way it is, but the negative one or the smallest one will be reversed. So in this case, we are going to reverse this half reaction because it is the smallest E0 of the two. The reaction is going to look like this. Pb equal to Pb2 plus plus 2 electrons. Then the E0, because we reversed it, it becomes a positive number. For the net ionic reaction, we are going to cancel the electrons and bring down the reactants and the products. The E0 is going to be the addition of the two. Or if we decide to use the equations, we maintain the signs that we see on the reduction tables. Now we can conclude that manganese dioxide is reduced, so it is a strong oxidizing agent and it happens at the cathode. Red cat. And we can say that lead is oxidized and this happens at the anode. If we check our oxidation numbers to verify this, we can see that manganese dioxide becomes manganese 2 plus, and we can see there's a plus 2 oxidation number of Mn, but on the reactant side, if you calculate the oxidation number using the rules we used, you can see that there's a plus 4 oxidation number. We can tell that there's a decrease in oxidation number which means a red cat. For the lead half reaction, we see that lead becomes lead 2 plus. The oxidation number of a pure element is 0 and on the other side is plus 2. So we can see there's an increase in oxidation number, which means an ox. Once again, if you use your equations, you're going to write E0 cell is given by E0 cathode minus E0 anode. Substituting the values exactly how we see them from the tables, we get plus 1,23 minus into 
minus 0, 0,13 as it was originally taken from the tables. Then we see that we get a positive 1,36 volts and this positive means that the reaction is spontaneous. Then we have answered all four questions. Also note that you don't have to do this in a test. I just showed you to verify how oxidation numbers agree with the tables. Our second example in this topic was taken from question 3 of the September 2023 trial exam for the Gauteng province. It says a galvanic cell is set up using a manganese rod, MN, and an unknown metal X. The initial EMF measured under standard conditions is 1,05 volts. The electrons flow from manganese to metal X in the external circuit. The question says use calculations to identify metal X for 5 marks. So the first step is to draw a diagram for yourself. In this case, here is my diagram. Then I'll assign manganese to this electrode. And then I'll assign my metal X to this other electrode. They tell me that the electrons will flow from the manganese to the X. So I can represent that on my diagram. Because electrons flow from the negative terminal to the positive terminal, I can then write my terminals. This means that where electrons start to flow is the manganese electrode which is negative and we know that negative means anode so we can represent an ox on the manganese electrode and on the x electrode it's a positive electrode we know a positive electrode is the cathode and we can say red cat an ox means anode oxidation so we already know that the manganese electrode is oxidized into mn2 plus thereby losing two electrons. We can take the E0 from the tables as negative 1,18 volts. So let's look at how we are to solve this question fully. So step one, let's write our given data. We are given the E0 of the cell, which is the voltage the whole cell produces, and it was 1,05 volts in the information. We already know the E0 of the anode because our manganese half reaction is the anode and it's negative 1,18 volts from the standard reduction potential tables. Step 2 is to use the suitable equation to solve for the unknown. Our unknown in this case is E0 cathode. So we take this equation from our equation sheet and then we substitute. Substituting everything the way it was given, we can see that our E0 cathode is negative 0,13 volts for our step 3, if we go back to the standard reduction potential tables, we can see that the only metal that gives away negative 0,13 volts is lead. So we say PB is our metal X. And that solves the question. If you have further questions on this, please address them in the comment section. And make sure to check the description to see how you can join my live classes. In the next video, we will talk about the redox reactions in electrolytic cells. Cheers!